Why, if you're going to be RVing in campgrounds, would you even want a generator? Stay tuned and find out. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you can live amazing with power. <laughs> Electricity, that is. Most of us are used to it and like it when we have it, and we're not so happy when we don't have it. Yeah, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I'm, I'm a slave to my devices, and, and when I don't have them, um, I, I get... <laughs> in a bad mood. Right, we're talking internet, laptop, phone, as well as, you know, staying warm in the winter and keeping cool in the summer. And I have to say that when I solo RV'd for the first year, not once, not twice, but three times the power went out in the campground. Now this is very common in California. They'll actually turn the power off if there's a wind warning or if there is a fire hazard. And the first time I lost power for three days, and I thought, oh, I can just, you know, live off the battery that's in the fifth wheel. Yeah, well, no. good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, no, that lasts <laughs> overnight, not even. So I had three times where I was really struggling without power. Now, it's not just in California. We have been traveling all over the country, and if they're doing work in the campground, I mean, you know, power goes out. They turn the power out. Yeah, it happens, and, and you have to be ready for it. When I was solo, I'd stay at, at truck stops. I boondocked at the Badlands, and, and without a generator, this is the one that I had at that time, I wouldn't have had power after a day, a, maybe less than 24 hours. Yeah, absolutely. If you're boondocking or driveway docking, we stayed in our friends Mark and Ann's driveway for a week, and that generator was really making a difference, and we wouldn't have been able to run the air conditioning, and it was 90-some degrees. Yeah, it was necessary. I mean, I would not have wanted to be without AC for that week. Well, so here's the thing. You need backup power if you're going to be full-time RVing or if you have an extended trip or even just for a weekend and it's going to be hot, you, you can't just rely on, on the campground and certainly if you're boondocking, you need the power. So what this video is about is actually, so Paul started out with the 3500 and, and we're switching that out for two 2000 watts and we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. So if you have a soft start, you can run one AC on one 2000. The product is called Soft Start. And it also works if you're mooch docking or driveway docking. You can actually run an air conditioner in a driveway hooked up to their household. That is a game changer for sure. And this also means that if you have a small generator, a 2000 watt uh, portable generator, you can run one AC off of that generator. This is one of those things that that we're all faced with that to buy or not buy with our campers and I've known about soft start pretty much since I started RVing but uh, up until now I never installed one I'm sorry the only thing I'm I'm sorry about is that I didn't do it sooner you should be able to run one AC on a, on a single 2000 mm -hmm. watt uh, generator if nothing else is on yeah you got to turn off your hot water heater you can't be running the microwave yeah and that's also dependent on how low your your batteries are at, at, at that moment because remember if you're inverter or converter depending on what you have in your rig is dumping a bunch of uh, power into the batteries that's a load and that's drawing off of the generator so there's a lot of things to learn about power you can do a deep dive in that in youtube yeah. there's all kinds of stuff about load and we don't want to just go, go no it, yeah. i mean that's that's a rabbit hole that, that, <laughs> <laughs> that if we go down we won't come out right <laughs> the main thing that that i see is a, a major pro for the two is the weight uh, when I had to move this thing, I I didn't like it. I mean, I was always worried that lifting that, uh, I was going to wrench my back. And and the older I get, the more I worry about that. Well, this one weighs 100 pounds. I mean, yeah, I. <laughs> I don't like picking it up even that high. Paul and I actually saw somebody back their pickup truck to a ditch trying to get the tailgate as low as possible so they could get their generator in the back of the truck. So this is no joke. These are very heavy and 100 pounds is nothing that I can lift by myself. Now I've even had back surgery, but I can lift one of these. They're 47 pounds. Ready? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, no, don't, 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 don't. I was just kidding. Don't do that. Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> there may 
may be times where you don't need both 2000s, so you could just pull one out. During the day, if we just want to keep our laptops going and yeah. the phones and stuff, then yeah. one. Yeah. But there are some pros and cons. A big con is the cost. So let me tell you, now the, the prices change all the time, but it will tell you what, what they are now. So buying the 3500 it came from Harbor Freight, is $799.99, basically $800. So one of the 2000 watt is $549, basically $550. So two of them is what, $1100? $1100, yeah. 11, but when you get the two, you also need to spend another $80 for what's called a parallel kit to link the two together. So that's, that's a con, is a cost. But if you can yeah. get past the cost, the portability. Another difference is the gas tank. Now, if you're boondocking, how big the gas tank is, is a big deal because yeah. you want to be able to run it overnight and not have to keep filling it. Uh, this one, the big one, the 3500, holds 2.6 gallons. These hold one gallon yep. each, so you've got a little bit less. But how long will they run on one tank is, the, is, is important. Now this one will run for 11 hours on 25%. Each one of these will run 12 hours on 25%. Now let me talk about some of the features that, that this has versus this or mm -hmm. vice versa. This actually has a meter on the front and I can see how much amps it's putting out. This does not have it. These have gas gauges on the top right here to tell you how much gas you have in them and this does not. Well, also the 3500 has a push button start and it has a display that shows volts, amps, and hours. The 2000 watt does not have those features. Well, these together take up slightly less space than this by itself. Now we're also gonna do a test because I have a suspicion that these two are gonna be louder than one. So we're gonna do a decibel test. Yeah, I downloaded a decibel meter. I don't know how accurate it is, but we're comparing them to, with using the same meter, so it'll, it'll be close enough. really surprised because I thought two would be twice as much you know you've got two motors two exhausts but they canceled each other out so we ended up being 78 79 decibels on the 3500 by itself but only 79 80 on the two together yeah and I think maybe if we have an engineer a sound engineer in the in the audience mm -hmm. Uh, perhaps you can explain this. I think it has something to do with the the pulses canceling each other out because it was no louder with two than it was with one. But that's good to know because you want to be good neighbors and you don't want to have anything louder than you need to be. It's going to sound basically like somebody mowing their lawn. Yeah, yeah, basically. I can't imagine an RV life without having a generator on board. I mean, it just doesn't doesn't compute. I mean, before I went out, I knew I needed a generator, so I went and bought the 3500. And I'll tell you the reason I looked at I looked at doing this when I did this, and the reason I didn't buy the two is be, is for cost. But it might be the difference, and particularly if you're solo RVing, it might be the difference between getting a generator or not at all by having one that you can lift. So for us, spending the extra money is worth it. Yours is older too, but it's served you well oh, in three it's, years. It's fine. I mean, it doesn't look great anymore. It's three years old and it's lived a, a lot in, in most of its life in the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. I remember actually um, when we were in Idlewild, it was in the back of the truck where, it, where, like I said, where it's lived most of its time. And there was, uh, no, no exaggeration, there was snow packed this, this high on the top of it. You know, after the snowstorm, we, I brushed all the snow off and started it right up. And it has yeah. never failed to start and provide power. That gauge on the front, it also tells me how many hours it's run. And I know it's in the, probably the three or 400 hour range right now. I've changed the oil a few times and it's fine. We want to thank Harbor Freight for providing the generators and uh, parallel kit for this video. I've been a Harbor Freight customer for long before I went out on the road. Uh, there was a day when their tools were cheap and junky, uh, but that's not true anymore. 
Um, as I said, I've had great service with the 3500 generator and I expect the same with the 2000s. And in fact, Paul cannot pass a Harbor Freight without going in. What's your name for Harbor Freight? I call it the mothership. <laughs> there are actually over 1200 Harbor Freights and they sell not just tools. You will find that they sell like things like decorative outdoor lighting, lawn sprayers, heaters, and they have a full selection of generators, whether you choose to get one 3500, two 2000 watt, or a different one such as the brand new generator they came out with. A uh, 9500 watt Predator. Yeah, that thing will run most of a house. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's good to be prepared. Even if you're in a house, you never know. So have you been camping and had the power go off? How did you get through it? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, we'd love to hear your stories about that.